and welcome to Offspring Magazine, the podcast. I'm your host, Srinath Ramkumar. So this week, we had a very interesting live episode. And this was already on Wednesday at 5 p.m. In case you missed it, this is basically a recap of what we discussed at the live episode. And you'll see what we discussed. It's mostly about our origin story and a few more stories from the host side, as well as a few questions from the audience. So without any further ado, let's get on with the discussion. <laughs> of the podcast came up um, in 2019 during yeah. the general meeting of the PhD net and for those who don't know what that is so that all the PhD representatives from each institute of the Max Planck Society come together once a year and then discuss uh, things that they want to do uh, as PhD and uh, to improve the situation of for all PhDs within the society. And one idea that came up was to do a scientific uh, communication and outreach uh, through potentially a podcast, because that way we could reach a wider audience and um, all the things we discussed and are somewhat relevant for everyone could then be broadcast to uh, many more people. And so this was the idea, but then kind of, uh, was not so easy to set it up and i mean especially i have no experience at all about like uh, recording yeah. microphones whatever uh so um i can jump in there maybe yeah so go that's ahead. where i came in so i was heading offspring in 2019 so when i started and then this guy comes up sin actually sin came up with the idea to start a podcast because he was starting a podcast at his institute i think he's in jena at one of the mpis in jena so he was starting a podcast at his institute and he suggested we should start one and we were like okay cool we should but then nobody had an idea what to really talk about so that's where it started so we thought we we thought what's the easiest thing to first talk about it's like the life of people doing a phd like generally how how they go about it What's it about? And then two of two of my lab mates were willing to. I mean, they're generally very vocal about stuff like this. They they talk a lot. They were also part of PhDNet and active in it. So they joined me, and so I did an interview with them. Just like it was a it was a very simple interview. Just keep a phone in the middle of a table, press record, and the three of us speak. And that was that was it was, was my very first interview. So like not a lot of editing. It's just a like you know straight long form recording which we then put together and added music and stuff and then things took off and then you know we published it and then we discovered that anchor was like a very good place to host it so we hosted it through anchor and they did all the distribution for us which is pretty cool and then once we published it we got into a bit of trouble because we were publishing for the max Planck society and uh, or with the with the name of the Max Planck Society, and we didn't really have a sort of permission to do that. <laughs> then we realized, then we started to do it the correct way, I guess. So, yeah. Oh, so I mean, it's come a long way. I mean, looking back, it kind of yeah. started and where it is now. Do you think that it's kind of gotten to a place where you're happy with it, or and it's kind of fulfilling that original vision, or do you feel like there's a lot of uh, space to grow? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, if you think of the first episode, it's, it came out on 13th, right? The 13th of June or July 2020. And in this year since then, we've come out with like almost 40, 41 episodes. Right. That's a lot. Like it's, uh, we've been almost weekly with the releases and that's pretty fantastic. I think what's also really nice now is that we have such a wide diversity on our uh, podcast. There's, I mean, I think because we've also grown as a team, we can cover a lot more topics. Um, yeah, which I, I, I also really enjoy. No, it was definitely great that we had other people join because, uh, I mean, doing this on a like with the weekly releases, it was quite tough. I think especially on Srinath as he was doing all the editing as well. I was just uh, sitting back and joining the interviews. 
Um, but yes, like it would be like already, I think uh, mid 2020, we were saying, yeah, let's try to keep this going. And we knew if we wanted to uh, continue, we needed new people, right? Otherwise, it's just impossible. So uh, we were happy that all of you joined and yeah, also are so active in this uh, this team. That's definitely helping. This is a this is a shout out to also everyone listening that wants to join and that you know we always need new members. So if you're That's interested true. in podcasts, there's a lot of jobs you can fill. Um, you don't have to be recording necessarily if you want to take more of an editing role or if you want to just kind of get involved with other people and help them on their projects uh, to kind of assist in that side of the podcast. It's always super helpful and. I think building that more robust team behind the podcast will help us, you know, uh, continue to expand not only the diversity of topics, but also the kind of quality of each episode. That's, I think I've noticed that's gone up quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. Hey, nothing against our episodes. <laughs> I mean, that was growing pains, man. <laughs> No, uh, no, I I agree. Like the, I think it's it's really great to have like all the people. Then you can also have multiple people check if the things sound fine, and uh, because sometimes you might say something during the interview uh, that you don't think about in a different way, and then someone else uh, listens to it and just checks whether if it's uh, um, yeah good to say things in a certain way or not, or if you can be misunderstood, which would be unfortunate. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess with this year, like I actually have to admit, I completely lost uh, the overview of uh, what's happening with the podcast with uh, you guys publishing so many episodes. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure how many do we have left this year for the final of the season. No, sure enough, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. I think at least 10 or 12 more for this season. So quite a few. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did 20, I think this is our 20th episode. The live episode is number uh -huh. 20, right? So, and we have at least 10 more. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we need to work on those 10. <laughs> anyway. The work never stops. Uh, yeah, sorry? The work never stops. Oh yeah, it never stops. No, the point I was also like kind of trying to make is, you know, you come across so many interesting topics that you want to discuss when you're trying to research for an episode or you're trying to research for a guest that you want to invite to be interviewed. And then you realize that, okay, so all of these topics are fascinating. Which one do I actually do an episode on? Right? Because it, it, it gets more and more difficult to uh, I genuinely start to find uh, the, the, the right balance between what's like a, a good number of episodes and a, what's a good range of topics to cover. So, yeah, I think it's quite interesting that we've at least done ourselves a little bit of, what do you call it? Like had, had a bit of fun as well as doing justice to the topic that we want to cover. Yeah. At least asking I mean, the right question. Yeah, I think it's really I mean, important also to, you want to be covering topics that you yourself are interested in because it makes the conversation a lot easier. But then you also want to be covering topics that obviously the general audience is interested in and there i think it's very important if we constantly get feedback from our um, listeners and they tell us what they want to be hearing as well yeah i mean on the topic of topics i guess uh which ones were, were like your personal highlights so far um i can start um I mean, I think one of the interesting ones for me to just be a part of was the Ben Thompson interview because he's a professional podcaster. He's in the big leagues, the big leagues of science podcasting and seeing his home recording set up, something that you can't get across on an audio podcast. But for Shreenat and I, who got to like do the video chat with him and to kind of share with, people, with everyone now, the way that he records is he puts himself underneath a laundry dryer, like a like one of these drying racks, and then he puts a quilt over top of that. And then he <laughs> he has his microphone and he huddles in with his laptop underneath this. And I guess that made me feel like, you know, our setup might be a little like amateur. 
but in Corona, everyone has to adapt. And so it kind of brought up a little closer. Beyond that- So it's like, it's not just about the equipment, it's about the content of what you're doing with the equipment. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I mean, just chatting with him more generally about science journalism, science communication was really interesting. I think it was a topic that for all of us is particularly interesting to cover because one of the things that, you know, we've always talked about covering on the podcast is this kind of alternate career paths that you can take as people who are in academics now. Uh, what can you do with your degree? What can you do with your training? And seeing how he was able to kind of fold his training into something that's obviously close to us was really exciting. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments, if everyone just wants to pop in and say hi, even, uh, you can direct message the Offspring Podcast Twitter account. Or just raise your hand. And I can add you as one of his people. Or you can raise your hand, apparently. I don't know how that works, but feel free to raise your hand. Uh, yeah, so that so feel free to jump in, give us a comment. Yeah, let us know that you're there. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Another really fun interview was the interview with Dr. Christian Magnus, who is also known as the Queer Coach. And the audio, like, we, we had to cut a lot, unfortunately, from that interview because we wandered a lot in the base recording. But it was a great discussion, and I think I'm really happy with how the final product ended up because I think it covered a lot of the really interesting stuff that we did uh, record. It's just, uh, you know, Christian had a lot to say, and they definitely helped uh, Allison and I, who were working on that podcast episode, uh, learn a lot about a variety of subjects. So it's certainly a, a fun discussion for me to have. Yeah, so maybe, cool. maybe I can... Um, keep Go going with like the, the podcast that I thought were very interesting. So um, the first one, actually my f very first podcast was the one with Dr. Deline, who's a researcher in the field of aging at a Max Planck Institute of Aging. Um, and that one for me was a very uh, interesting podcast just because the, the field of research aging interests me a lot. And I think yours did a great job in speaking and explaining everything very well. I think one of the key points that um, really shocked me was the fact that aging right now is considered a disease. So that was, I think a lot of people did not know that. So that just shows you, yeah, I, I learned something new from the podcast. And then the second one that I really enjoyed listening to that I didn't record myself, it was a Srinath's podcast on polycystic ovary syndrome, so PCOS, which just came out recently. And that's also a topic that I think more people should be talking about and that more people should be aware of. And the podcast was also explained very well. Both of these podcasts, the science was not extremely difficult to understand. So I'd highly recommend them to, to anyone. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great if the science can be communicated in a, communicated in a great or easy way to, for everyone to understand. Because I, I guess like if you're... Uh, working on the field like you don't know what the average um, knowledge is on a certain top or uh, on that topic so exactly. being able to bring that across yeah i think also what i hope that we're going to have more in the upcoming seasons is more scientific discussions where people can learn about fields in science that maybe they're not an expert in or they don't know so much about but if we communicate it in a way that other scientists can understand or even the general public then we just it'll be a learning platform as well Definitely. Great. Okay. Then, I mean, I guess I can go next. So, I guess one of the episodes that I liked uh, a bit uh, or quite a bit was the mental health one that we recorded with uh, Barbara and JD last year. And I, uh, the reason why I like it was just because it was such a casual discussion about a really tough topic, right? I mean, mental health, especially for PhDs, uh, is a tough subject. Um, and uh, seeing the recent surveys uh, showing that like up to 40% of all PhDs have uh, some kind of um, mental health issue uh, just shows how important this uh, topic is. And just then making it more or bringing more awareness to it and showing people that they can just they can get counseling and that it's normal and that it's like if you break your leg you go to a doctor and if you uh, I don't know feel a bit depressed or burned out you go to a psychiatrist like that this is a very normal process to do 
So um, yeah, that's why I like that episode a lot. I think I actually re-listened to that episode and I, I really, really liked it because it really felt like natural conversation. Were you guys mm -hmm. in person for this episode? Yeah. Uh, yes, we were in person. That that was also one of the nice things during the recording. I mean, we were partially in person because Srinath yeah. was uh, there with, uh, through the computer. Uh, but uh, I think yeah. that yeah, it makes the conversation flow a lot nicer, especially when you're multiple people. And I think you guys were four. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, even for the PCOS episode, right? Like we were yeah. in person, and that made a huge difference because when you're recording, you can sort of catch the delay which happens over Zoom or whatever medium. And that, that delay makes a difference when you're trying to interject or you're trying to or, or guide someone along a certain direction because your body language says more than just uh, the audio. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it comes across much better than on video. I mean, this is something I think everyone is keenly aware of in the Zoom era of work is that the teleconferencing solutions are not really a substitute. They're more of a kind of bridge um, for that kind of, for that natural interaction, because there's a lot that you can't uh, pick up on using those formats. Yeah, definitely. I think it's finally my turn to say which was my favorite episode. And uh, I mean, honestly speaking, the most reviews I've gotten are from people in my lab about the first two episodes because they know the people who were the guests for the episode. And they really, I don't know, like, I, I wouldn't say it's my most favorite episode because I, in retrospect, I could have done it so much better. <laughs> but it still, it still was like a nice kickoff, uh, like, you know, like a spot to just jump off and just see where it takes you. And I think that really helped us uh, get ourselves on this trajectory to make more episodes and at least streamline the process to make it. So that was, uh, I really liked the, the season one, uh, first couple of episodes. And then I think one of my absolute favorite interviews was with Elizabeth Bick and the one on scientific misconduct. And she was such a fascinating person to talk to about, uh, about the work that she does and also the the, the kind of uh, things that she comes across in her field and it, it's just in, insane and to, to me you know yeah, you get painted totally this agree. rosy picture yeah right you get painted this extremely yeah. rosy picture of what the world is about and then what scientific world is about and then you're suddenly like boom <laughs> this is not what science well, is about science that she also a lot of things that she said it was you don't even think that it's going on in science you always think science is better than that, but it's very interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean one another really interesting interview. I just want to add this. Nico, you want to jump in? Yeah, Go just ahead. too quickly. I think if, uh, while she's also working in the field where you kind of see these people a lot. So I, I want to still believe that the majority of scientists don't do that. Uh, and that, that, but unfortunately, there's of course always uh, people that do it, and um, figuring out who those are. I think the scientific process needs to improve and make sure this doesn't happen as much as um, as she mentioned. Yeah, I, I mean, just wanted her to quickly job add that. is extremely important. It is definitely one that is absolutely yeah. necessary because science cannot work with inaccuracies or falsifying data. It just can't. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anyway, <laughs> that was. Uh, that was a fantastic interview. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Adrian. I was going to say the falsifying data thing is particularly prescient this week. If anyone's been following the uh, the reports of the falsified paper on falsifying data. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We heard about this. Can you can you tell us more about it? That was yeah. So really it, fascinating. it was an older paper. I believe it's published in 2013, but a kind of forensic breakdown of the results because the, the data was actually there by a group of anonymous researchers on a blog called Data Collada, I think very convincingly showed that this paper whose subject was whether or not people lie on insurance forms about how far they've driven their car, uh, whether or not that data indicates this kind of systemic falsification. And it turns out that there's pretty good evidence 
that this data was um, partially falsified <laughs> in the sense that the after the, the kind of check-in, the, the initial numbers are probably accurate, but that there's like a, a mirrored set, all the kind of second measurements that were just kind of made by a random number generator. And yeah, I mean, it made some waves this week in the kind of science news sphere. Just, yeah. just jumping in on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's funky, but yeah. Anyway, I think we can move on <laughs> a bit away from misconduct. I mean, like the other very interesting one was uh, the Jan Werner interview as well. Like that was something I really enjoyed doing the, the, the whole thing because he is such a fascinating person to talk to. I mean, he was, he was the head of the German uh, ministry for, uh, for aerospace and then he was the head of ESA and now he's the head of Akatech. So he's had this extremely high achieving, high caliber career and he's an engineer at, at his heart. So, you know, he, he was telling, I mean, in some situations where, you know, physicists come up to him and say, hey, uh, I, I, I have this, this sort of theoretical solution to this problem or the theoretical thing. And he's like, don't come to me with theory because when you're launching a rocket to space, uh, theory only helps so much, but if a material can really withstand certain things, then it, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, practical thought that one needs to put into to running a space program. And he, he was a very fascinating person to talk to. And some really interesting stories in the podcast. Uh, quite funny. Anyway, does anyone in the audience want to kind of jump in? Lea, you want to maybe jump in and tell us? You can unmute yourself. Yes, but I like listening to you. You're better at this podcasting than I am. No. <laughs> I can say from the PhD net that we're really proud and happy that you're doing all of this. And I actually have a question. Are you planning to have it more in person again if the situation allows it? So to actually go to the places, to the people that you're interviewing? I mean, if it's someone in the US and I, or in Asia, I doubt we'd be flying there. Re to the reasonable distances, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it should be possible, I guess. I think that would be the hope, just because you do seem to get a better kind of quality of conversation that way. Yeah, I mean, also, I think one thing that the Max Planck Society is good at is uh, getting like some high profile speakers in general. And I mean, maybe not nowadays, but if like the situation somewhat normalizes and pe uh, meetings in person <clears throat> are generally more common again, I could imagine that uh, there will be whenever there's a, a speaker that you're interested in, uh, you just ask if they're willing to do some kind of recording. And I mean, it doesn't have to be long, right? You can just have like half an hour, speak to them about their topic and their careers, just uh, some basic things. And uh, yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah. Anyway. Thanks for the question. Yeah, nice question. Yeah, I mean, now that we've so maybe people can gone over the highlights. Or, I mean, we can, we can move on, but if people want to raise their hands and ask any question, please go ahead. So I can just invite you to become a speaker. And it can be on anything. Don't worry if it's a yeah. quote unquote off topic. I mean, or it doesn't have to be about the podcast. You can just ask us anything. Otherwise, I could jump in. So we talked about the highlights. What are the opposite ones? Like, where are ones that you would now do completely different and why? So I, 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 have, I have one that I okay. can jump in on. So I'm very happy with how the final product ended up for two of the episodes. It was a two-part series about women in science that I edited. Um, and Allison and... Uh, Allison did the interview with, oh God, now I'm blanking. Sorry. Sandra. With Sandra, thank you. And they had kind of two episodes in mind, but in the actual interview, they weaved between the two subjects back and forth. And so in the editing, I had to take and put, pull them back out. <laughs> and that was a lot of work. <laughs> that, that I think was the most work I did editing on an episode. I believe it was Marla Feller, maybe? 
I can't. Yeah. Possible. Possible. Anyway, yeah. That was <laughs> that was when I took a more active role in helping plan the interviews, so that we could <laughs> we wouldn't have to do that again. Yeah. I mean, one yeah, I episode think... that I really had some issues with was the very early one with Peter Super. And uh, he didn't have a headphones. Or also the one with the, uh, uh, what's his name? The, the, the guy, Tony Hyman, the Tony Hyman interview. He didn't have headphones. <laughs> so oh, yeah. we had so much echo, which I had to edit completely. I mean, like, uh, this, this, editing wise, uh, we, you know, we completely wish we knew what we know today and tell people that before we establish uh, like you know the partnership for an interview tell them please have headphones with you because we do that now but before when we didn't do that it was it used to be like make them go look scrambling for headphones in the last minute and i think that's not nice so yeah i mean this this thing is really yeah it's it's one of the things in retrospect i we wish we knew but before we started but yeah. anyway but yeah you wanted to say something Oh, yeah, I guess I just wanted to say that, um, yeah, like for me, I mean, there's always just some people that are very, very interesting, probably even more interesting than what you imagined. And then there's others that, unfortunately, they just on podcasts, it's just the way they speak and the way they answer questions isn't like you expected. And that's kind of, I mean, you never really know that beforehand. So you have to record the podcast, release it, and then you've kind of learned your lesson. Um so yeah, there's always a, a few of those episodes here and there. So Leah, to uh, to give you a bit more uh, context on what Bea is talking about, it's actually a future episode that we had planned. And the topic was so fascinating, but the interview was such a bust. So we're really <laughs> reorganizing the whole idea for the episode now. So anyway, it's something which is which we have to look out for in the future. But how would you prepare for it? How would you make it different to not for this to not happen? I mean, it's still a different topic then, right? No, I mean, the simple solution to this is basically send your interviewee the questions beforehand and tell them, can you answer these questions? And if they say no, or if they say, I can answer these questions, but not those, you just ask them those questions. But then if you, if you ask them, I mean, and also, if you if you if you ask people things in a scientific in the scientific environment or a scientific field, they'd be they'd welcome questions and they'd answer it. But if you ask someone in a different field, like in a corporate field where IP and stuff like this are a real issue, then it's also going to be a bit difficult. So I think you need to really gauge the person you're interviewing and get things approved beforehand. So yeah. Anyway. Anyone else have anything to say to jump in? Yeah, I think generally the um, difference, there's always a difference between the interview, uh, like how you perceive it, and then how it sounds when you re uh, when it, uh, you listen to it again. Um, because some, I thought in one or two interviews that uh, it sounded really bad and it, like there was no connection between uh, us hosting and the interviewee. Um, so that it seems like we have to pull everything from them or the questions weren't fitting. But then if you listen to it often, it sounds okay-ish. I mean, maybe Serena did his magic editing there and it was fine. Um, but yeah, generally I was uh, positively surprised by how some interviews turned out based on how I perceived the interview itself. Also, now that, you know, Leah has also asked us which ones were our favorite, which ones, you know, didn't go as planned, maybe it would be a good time to ask Leah and everyone else that's listening what kind of podcast they really enjoyed and maybe which ones they didn't enjoy so much. So we kind of get some feedback from you as well. So I don't mind anyone, anyone yeah, in the I audience. Know. If someone or wants to be yeah. a speaker, just, yeah. Just tweet at us or just raise your hand using one of the emoji buttons in the bottom. And I can add you as a speaker so that you can join the discussion. It would be nice if there was a chat function for the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't have to take a big break, I don't think, to, uh, to wait. If anybody has questions, feel free to jump in at any time. Um, Shriya, do you want to maybe give us you know, at, as we are kind of in this retrospective mood, maybe some idea of like 
how much the podcast is listened to. There's some kind of the stats of the of yeah. the actual show. So yeah, this is I'm I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, looking at it at the moment. So the thing is, both I, I'm not really sure which topics people like the most because the summer of open science series was well received generally. And also like the, some episodes, have, like for example, the interview with Tony Hyman or the most recent one where with Nadine Gogola about balancing science and health, these episodes kind of did really well from the beginning. But then some episodes take some time to catch on to reach the same levels of, uh, let's say, listenership. I mean, overall, we've had like greater than 6,500 downloads and streams across all platforms, which is actually quite interesting given that we are running a zero budget operation, right? <laughs> and, uh, and on Spotify, we at least have over 350 followers, which is pretty interesting. And these are sort of regular listeners who subscribe to the podcast and who come back to it, on, or at least who get notifications every time a new episode is released. That's quite nice. I mean, uh, on average, we get like listens within a week. Each episode crosses at least 100 listens. Each new episode crosses like 100 listens. But I think we can definitely, I mean, also our target audience has been quite narrow. So we could try to see what type of audience we want to target with the next uh, type of, because I mean, we've been looking more at like meta science stuff as well. And we've recently started doing more psychom episodes, right? Once, I think once they have started, we've done a few more psychom episodes. So I think that would also be uh, quite interesting to see how audience responds to that. And yeah, I think as expected, the most listened episode is the first episode of the first season. It's like close to 500 listens or something. It's quite nice. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think overall we've had close to 40 guests, including the VPs whose interviews we did last year, uh, Vice President Max Planck Society. That was quite fun, those interviews. Yeah. Anyone else want to jump in? I feel I'm talking a lot. Very verbose. <laughs> It would actually also be interesting to know, like, on what platform people listen to their podcast most. Is it Spotify, is it Apple Podcast, Anchor? Yeah, I mean, Spotify is our biggest platform. And That's I mean, really it's biggest single platform, right? Spotify is single biggest, and then then followed following that is Apple Podcasts, and then we have this others category where it's a bunch of other platforms that people like to use. Yeah, it's probably the only is Google Podcast user. <laughs> in maybe the world. Yeah, yeah. Spotify is an interesting one, though, just because uh, I, I personally have never really, I've never really listened to a lot of podcasts on Spotify. So, I mean, the, I think the advantage of Spotify, it, I would have imagined, is that it's cross-platform. You know, like people yeah. on both Google, on computers, on. Uh, you know, like on, on Apple, whatever, all devices, you can use it. But if you look at Apple Podcasts or, or on the other hand, it's restricted to Apple devices, right? I don't think you can listen. Yeah. I mean, you can listen to it online, but yeah, it's kind of restricted to Apple devices. And then some apps like Pocket Cast are more restricted to Android because I don't think you can download Pocket Cast from uh, Apple. Uh, it's side loading. Whatever. Also, anyway. I think one major advantage is that you have it anyway for listening to music, or many people have it, and then podcasts are just an addition for Spotify, while many of the other apps are only for podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you just you have to know that it's on Spotify, and maybe that's not the first thing that you think about. But hopefully we advertise that well enough to let people know that it is on Spotify. I mean, clearly that is the case also. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I would be interested how long it takes for other podcasts to pick up, uh, like some uh, the, a certain number of listens and so on. Um, because, 
yeah, I think it's uh, in the beginning it's always difficult, right, to get uh, someone to listen to you if you, um, yeah, if you had, haven't made a name for yourself yet. I mean, so. if we look at people like Joe Rogan or someone like their first like early seasons, they didn't have that much listenership. They only started becoming insanely popular after like four or five years of doing it. Srinath, are you saying we're going to be like the next Joe Rogan? No, of course not. I, I, I'm just is giving a me bad me example. Do have a thing of supplements in the back there? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what? Just, do you have a little like container of supplements maybe that you're going to start hawking on the, uh, the podcast? <laughs> oh, I wish I did. I wish we had sponsors, but no. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just saying, I think if, if you know, like most people say perseverance is key and I'm quite confident that's going to be the case for any platform or any medium of communication that you choose. You've got to have regular content and also interesting topics that people want to listen to. Right. So I think that that's, I think that's the key aspect to what we need to pursue in these upcoming seasons and episodes. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say before as well. It's just, it's finding that key topic that, that you know, because it's, sometimes you find everything interesting. And so you're like, oh, this would be a great podcast. I'll do it on this. Everyone will find it interesting. But it's, you need to find that key topic that everyone's interested in. And I think once you find that and once you get people to listen to that, then maybe they'll go back and listen to your other ones. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I, I mean, I guess like we have a very specific target audience, which is like a Max Planck Society PhD students, and of which uh, I guess there's like a bit more than 5,000 or so. Uh, so I don't know, I always feel weird, uh, like doing some kind of advice episodes, because I mean, in the end, you can only speak from your own experience and then being like this all knowing person to does a podcast and giving like, I don't know, 10 tips in to do a successful PhD or whatever sounds a bit, uh, I don't know. Uh, Buzzfeed like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So even though Nico, I want to go back to the point that you said that our podcast is just for our is just for like PhD students. I really hope that we can change that in the future as well, especially if we start talking more about like the research that's going on within the Max Planck Society. I think a lot of people worldwide would be interested to know what kind of research we're doing. And through a podcast, you get a lot more detail as just on the website. So I'm really hoping that in the future, the podcast will expand and will be more of a platform for anyone out there rather than just PhD students. No, I think that makes sense. It's just like based on, I mean, technically we are getting funded by the Max Planck Society through PhDNet and PhDNet's goal is to improve the life of PhD students in the Max Planck Society. That's why I thought this was our main target audience at first, <clears throat> but I completely agree uh, that uh, like doing scientific outreach and also since we're starting to collaborate more with other people as well, um, I think it would be great if we can get more people to listen to, uh, especially, I guess, the rel the science communication episodes. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing more of that in the future. And I mean, the PhD net is about also bridging between the disciplines. So if you like interview the PhDs and talk about what science they make, and this is interesting for a bigger audience, it's still addressing the PhDs and doing the outreach for us as PhDs. So I think this totally fits. Yeah, I think actually um, it would be really interesting to uh, have a podcast with some PhD students, kind of like Srinath had the podcast with, um, I forget what her name is. Like the, the first on ones, right? The first one, Julia the and Mohammed, yeah. Well. Exactly, yeah, and also the PCOS one where you just take mm. a PhD. PhD students tend to be also experts in their field, especially if yeah. you get older PhD students. So talking to them and... Yeah. Be really so she was a postdoc, but yeah, she was like, this topic was about her. I mean, like the only thing that would be something of concern is, is their research sensitive, right? Like, I mean, if, if for example, someone who's doing their PhD, who's afraid of being scooped or something would not be willing to talk openly about their science. I mean, it, it's a different thing going to conferences. It's, it's another thing putting it on platforms like Spotify or where it's very open to the public. Yeah, so, in science communication, you don't have to go in detail if you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. But then it's still, 
for some re some really specific topics, you still need to get permissions from your supervisors if you want to talk. But if it's someone who's worked on something during their masters, or their or their PhD and they're a postdoc now, or their PI now, and it's something that they finished, like the paper or something's come out of it already, and they're willing to talk about it, and that's actually a much easier topic to deal with. And that's definitely what we we can harness the power of PhD net, postdoc net, and all all the different. People within the Max Planck Society for that. Yeah, you could maybe advertise new papers by being like people that are interested to give an interview about their new paper. They yeah. like make a podcast with you. Yeah, that would be the nature model of doing things, right? The nature podcast style. Yeah. Yeah, I think generally uh, promoting uh, early career researchers is a good thing in itself. And if we maybe also get more people at some point, we can uh, increase the um, capacity of episodes we do and uh, have maybe even different, like you could have a weekly podcast uh, on just the scientific topic, right? And then have like other episodes, um, I don't know, that are like on a, like maybe like open science stuff every now and then, uh, but um, like, a, right, like a weekly schedule for a certain type of episode. Yeah, I guess we need a much more uh, structured way to get episodes out on that sort of schedule. But anyway, I think it is, this is things we need to consider for the future and that's quite interesting. To, I mean, I, I, honestly, for me, to see that it's grown from where we started to now, it's already quite a big thing. I'm quite happy with that. And can only wish the future the best. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm looking forward. Like, I mean, I guess uh, Serena and me are might not be joining forever, right? I mean, as we have to finish up at some point. Uh, but um, yeah, seeing where this all goes uh, is definitely going to be interesting and uh, definitely keep uh, listening and following the, the podcast uh, group over, over time. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, so maybe we can also talk about some future plans that we have, especially maybe me and Adrian, but also Nico and Serena, that's kind of like your final episodes. What would you want to record or have in mind? Mm -hmm. I mean, we wanted to really do this funding and science series, right? That's that's uh, something that's going to happen. And Adrian and I, we were planning to do this thing with peer review. And that's also yeah, something that's going to happen. Peer, peer review debate is still on the table. I have found mm -hmm. people who are interested, so hopefully yeah. they can agree to uh, mm -hmm. make I put a format in front of them that's agreeable for and going to be informative to the audience. Because I think that's something that would be a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, with the funding and science, uh, yeah, I think the because I'm also starting to look into like fellowships for postdocs and so on. So I think I hope at least one episode on this will be published eventually. It's just if you the more research you have to do, the harder it is to get started because I mean, all of us are doing our PhDs on the side as well, right? On the side. <laughs> <laughs> this is the main thing. The PhD is the side hustle. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, PhD is always a hustle, yeah. right? It's constant hustle. But yeah. What about you guys? Yeah, and then I also want to. I also want to mention an upcoming podcast that I have planned, which is actually meant to come out. I mean, in a in a month's time, we'll record. So that's meant to come out for the Mental Health Awareness Week. And so last, we talked about the mental health podcast that was done last year, um, where we, you guys talked about like the experiences of PhD students, which I think was really important. Um, and then this year, my idea was to um, have a podcast with a researcher who researches stress-resilient um, diseases, such as depression. And so I guess in this podcast, my plan would be to kind of dive deeper into the research behind it, the environmental factors that can cause these sort of diseases like depression and also maybe the genetic variants and what they found. And he's actually a researcher at the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry. So still part of the Max Planck Society. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I want to try this thing here. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that'll be super cool. Um, 
I want to try and bring a little bit of the kind of uh, other side of like the humanity side of the Max Planck into the fold a little bit on the podcast because I think that's a side that doesn't necessarily get as much attention. So hopefully a little bit of the history and the law stuff, either through the peer review side or through maybe uh, the funding series to talk about the kind of historical context and the broader societal implications of scientific funding, I think would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that's a very important point, actually. I think we, unfortunately, uh, like I, I'm not sure if the connection between or the overlap is just not there really because the Max Planck Institutes are separate after all. But getting like some people from the humanities would be very nice just to see uh, what, what they're what they're actually doing uh, because it might be like quite different from what we're used to, and like but I, I would assume just as important. So getting some input there would definitely be interesting. Yeah, I totally um, agree. That was also actually one of my plans to see. I, there's just so many Max Planck institutes around Germany that just you can find one on any kind of field to talking about researchers. Yeah, in law, criminal law, I saw anthropology, for example. That is definitely something that's that's that I wanted to be doing in the future. Yeah, I think that'll be... Uh nice diversity in terms of subject and hopefully kind of fulfill that core mission of highlighting work within the the MPG. Well, and yeah, the, and I'm also, I'm also hoping that we can expand our listeners by diving into that field. Yeah. Maybe right now most of our listeners are still from the bi biology, biosciences, chemistry, physics kind of side, but maybe yeah, we can incorporate so. some of the humanities in it. Definitely. Actually, we, we had this one episode planned that I contacted a person. I actually met this person during the PhD net general meeting last year. So she was researching the ethics of this. Uh, uh, she, she's, she was at a, a Max Planck Institute for Law, and she's researching the ethics of this new Chinese policy where they do the social rating system. And that's a really fascinating topic to talk about. But, you know, like schedules from people and it's a bit difficult to get there. So yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the things in the work. Maybe you guys can take this over from me and see if it pans out for next season. That would be yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I definitely. would like to listen to this episode if it comes that out. That sounds really interesting. Okay. Already giving the new people work. Hey, right. that's, that's the way up we your roll, mess. right? <laughs> Cleaning also, up you wanted mess. to do one on Astro, right? On with what, Yuli. Sorry? You wanted to do one with oh. Yuli on astrophysics, right? Yeah, but that never worked out either. Yet. Yet. Exactly, yet. 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 That's maybe something for season three. If someone else idea. takes over. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone else have a question? I think we have... If not... Maybe a minute more or two we can stay online. Yeah, I re yeah. I I'm reading this book right now called How Economics Shapes Science, and it's just making me want to do that kind of intersection more and more. All right, that's cool. Where did you get the, uh, like, hear about the book? Uh, I think you interviewed the author, Paula Steven. Paula Stefan, ah, is this, this is her book. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is one of her books. <laughs> But he didn't in that interview. It wasn't so much on that subject. Oh, ah, okay. I mean, she was happy to do another interview, to be honest. Yeah, I figured she had a lot to say. So she's a very a good fantastic example. person to talk to. She's so sweet. That's a sweet person. Yeah. But she writes with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Her words are cutting. Adrian, nice. you've just given me a great book advice. I didn't know I have that this podcast also gives book advice, so it's great. I'm going to look into it. Thanks. Can do a scientific uh, book club, too. Why not? I have lots of science books I can recommend. Maybe we should do a, an episode just on that. That could be fun. Good books for scientists. Yeah. That could be fun, actually. Yeah. A lot of people are always looking for like new books to read, or there's so many books out there, no one knows about them. So it's not That's a bad true. idea. Yeah. I envy that people. I have too many books to read. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, sometimes it's, I, I think sharing some of these like science books would be fun in the sense that often I get recommendations for books outside of science, you know, either historical or fantasy or whatever else. But I find a lot of, I don't get a lot of recommendations on actual books or books that are actually about a scientific subject, whether or not that's science and society or something scientific in and of itself. And so I, I really value those recommendations. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit that I, I, I don't know, I don't like reading non-fiction, uh, reading fiction. So I was only reading like uh, non-fiction and these types of books. And I don't know, I find them far more interesting. Although they're tough to read sometimes. Like you read them and then you, you have to think about it and then you have to put it down. So it takes like a year to read a, one book. At least, uh, so I read this uh, Thinking Fast and Slow from Kahneman. And this was like, I think yeah. a whole year. Uh, just to understand all the concepts and but it, in the end it's very uh, rewarding i mean another book that i was quite interested in was sapiens i think this has done its rounds throughout you and gotta save it for the book recommendation podcast yeah we, should yeah, do we have so this many books right here <laughs> yeah. we gotta keep this we gotta keep this uh these cards close guys <laughs> we're just giving away this content now yeah let's do that let's do an episode on that all right cool book recommendations maybe, maybe the next from... live episode or something can be can be on book recommendations from the editorial experience. exactly yeah. Exactly. I think everyone's bored of hearing our experiences anyways now. Yeah. Right, maybe but we should cut them off then. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> been fine. I think we've been on for an hour almost now. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Thanks everyone for joining. Yeah, hosts, big thank you to and everyone. Leah that and uh, Academic Minds and Emmanuel. Thanks a lot. And also, I think a few people jumped in and left in the middle. And that was also nice. We have a new yeah, big shout out though to the people that have stayed and listened to the full hour. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> yeah. Big, big shout out. <laughs> Thanks for hosting it. It was really nice. I'm glad. Yeah. Thanks a lot right, for guys. joining. And maybe we find a much more elegant solution for next time so people can have a much more lively discussion with us. I think Twitch. We should just make a Twitch account. Twitch, yeah. Or maybe YouTube. YouTube live. YouTube yeah. live. YouTube we could live. do YouTube live. We have a YouTube page, right? With PhD net. That would work. That would yeah. work. Let's yeah. do let's do that. Yeah, let's do that next time. Okay, Twitter, don't take this the wrong way. It's just not there yet. <laughs> if Twitter's listening. I know they are. Anyway. <laughs> all right, guys. I mean, all social media platforms are listening to you. So <laughs> on that Terrible, disappointing note. I think it's time to end. Thanks a lot for joining, and I hope you have a wonderful day ahead. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 All right. With that, we've come to the end of this recording of a live episode, and we really hope you enjoyed it. And it was one of our first attempts in doing something like this on Twitter Spaces. And if you'd like to give us any feedback, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to write to us at offspring.podcasts at phcnet.mpg.de or contact us on Twitter or Instagram. We're available on all social media platforms. And with that, I would say adieu and see you all next week for another fantastic episode of the podcast. Till then, bye-bye.